Hey guys, welcome back to my kitchen. This is Zen Chen Yoga's second week with our cooking videos. And for this week, our special ingredient is apple. I wasn't going to pick the apple for this week, but then going to the grocery store and being surrounded by so many different types, I kind of caved in and had to do it. So our recipe tonight is the curried squash and apple soup. And then I'm also gonna show you how to make apple biscuits to go with it. So yes, you're gonna be getting two recipes tonight, but I promise they're not difficult, they don't require very many ingredients, and very, very, very tasty. So, for the curried squash and apple soup, for, let's see, four servings, sorry, I have several different notes here. <laughs> for four servings, you're gonna need one medium-sized onion. I like to use the sweet onions. I don't really like the taste of onion that much, so I try to pick the more flavorful onions, I guess. I don't know, the sweet onion has been working for me. So use whatever onion you like, um, but you need one medium, medium onion. You need one large winter squash, uh, a butternut squash, or an acorn squash. So I actually chose an acorn squash because acorn squash to me tastes like it has a little bit more potato taste. And if you know me, I love potatoes. But also I was just, I don't know, I kind of looked at the other ingredients and thought I kind of want more of a potato-y taste for my soup tonight. But you can use either any of those. If you have a preference, that's fine. You just want to pick out one of those squashes. We'll also need two Granny Smith apples. So here's two, two right here. And then, of course, again, we want to eat as natural as we can, as close to earth. So if you plan on eating the skin, please try and get organic. I know organic's a little bit more expensive. If you live in an area and you're blessed with having farmer's markets nearby, apples are in season right now, so you could totally get organic apples for next to nothing in price. Um, but the skin has a lot of the nutrients in it. But if you are buying a conventional apple, you are going to be consuming a lot of the chemicals that they use, like pesticides and things like that on in their gardens. So we don't want that stuff in our body. It builds up over time. So if you plan on eating the skin, try and get um, try and get organic. But for this recipe, we're actually going to peel it. So if you just end up with a conventional one, that's that's fine too. We're we're good. We're good. <laughs> so you also need some curry powder. Again, we're doing curry again this week, um, or at least using the curry spice. I mentioned I love I love the flavor right now. And then we need some apple cider vinegar. And then also just have, so we need vegetable broth too. We'll need vegetable broth. And then um, just have some salt and pepper handy. You might want to use it at the end when you're taste testing and you want to add a little bit of flavor to it. So that's for four servings. I'm going to be making two servings tonight. So if you notice I'm using less ingredients than what I said initially, that's why. Uh, the ingredients I told you are for four servings, I'm making two. <laughs> okay, so we will start making the soup first, and then while the soup is bubbling and simmering and things like that, then I'll show you how to make the apple biscuits and what ingredients you'll need for that. So first, I need to prep, prep our ingredients. You are going to want to, so I, again, four servings, you need two. I'm only going to use the one. You want to peel your apple and then dice it up into maybe about an inch ish. I, I'm not. I'm not too. Um, I don't know. I'm not super picky about like the sizes. I just go with it and see what works later. And then same with the the squash. We got to get the squash out of the skin and the, or the hard shell. It feels like a shell to me and um, cut those up into about maybe half an inch um, pieces. So I'm gonna prep those and then we will get cooking. <laughs> okay guys, so I went ahead and prepped all of our ingredients. I got our apple, our ingredient of the week, all cut up. I, mm, they're not all uniform in size. It doesn't really matter, we're gonna make it soup. But some of it I actually cut a little bit smaller because I'm really hungry and if you cut it smaller, it cooks a lot faster. This is our acorn, well, my acorn squash. So the squash that you're using, 
And then I went ahead and got the other ingredients close by just to have handy. And I am I went ahead and started sauteing our onions. Okay. I'm letting those saute till they get slightly brown or I like to cook them until they are fragrant. When I start smelling the onion cooking, then I go ahead and start adding all the other ingredients. Let me turn you back here a little bit so you can see. Hopefully I don't drop the phone. So you can use water in your pan um, if you don't want to use vegetable broth, just to add a little something in there so that the onions don't stick. You can use oil too if you like to cook with oil, but remember, remember you don't need, um, you don't need to use a whole lot of oil or any oil at all when you're cooking with onions or, um, mushrooms or garlic because the onions are actually, once they start heating up, they release a little bit of their own oil. And you'll find that it's, I thought I was crazy when somebody told me first and I started cooking with just, I used water instead of oil. And I was like, there's no way, but it's true. <laughs> and it combines the flavor so much better, I think. Um, also oil tends to coat the flavor. So it's your choice. If you like to cook with oil, by all means, put a teeny tiny bit in there and then just let your onion saute in the oil until they become brown and fragrant um, the way that you like your onions. I don't let them cook for too long because I notice that they start, to, I mean, they continue to cook a little bit more later on in the, in, in the recipe or whatever you're, whatever you're cooking, um, but it's your preference. I really don't like onion that much, so I try to chop it down fine, use a little less, and just, I want it to cook for a longer time so it captures, you know, I like the taste of onion, I like the flavor that it adds, but I want to taste the rest of the, of the meal. So, so now that our onions are, you know, they're beginning to brown a little bit. We're getting there. This is good. And you want to keep, keep your, whatever you're using as your oil, water, vegetable broth, um, a little bit of oil, whatever you're using, just have that nearby so you can add it so it doesn't stick. So after it starts to brown, we want to start adding our other ingredients. So I'm going to let, I'm going to add the squash first because squash tends to take a little bit longer to cook than apple. Okay, so we got our squash in there. I'm gonna add a little bit of broth in there. Just a tiny bit. All right. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add the apples in there now because, you know, we're making a soup, so that's all it needs to cook down. So there goes our apple. Our ingredient of the week, our ingredient that grows in 50 states. I had no idea. I had to look it up. I thought that was crazy. I did not think apples could grow in Alaska. <laughs> but I found out they actually grow some of the best apples. I'm like wanting to go on an apple tour now and taste all these apples from all over the world. Okay, so then we need to add our curry powder. So I'm only going to add in half a tablespoon because I'm having the recipe. So if you're doing the four servings, you want to do a whole tablespoon to start off anyway. I always find that I want to add more, add more later. I'm going to go ahead and add the broth in there so everything starts to blend together. And then we also need our apple cider vinegar. It actually calls for a whole cup of apple cider vinegar. So I'm only going to need the half cup. So I'll go ahead and measure that out. And then I forgot to mention, but you can add some cayenne pepper in there. I don't like a whole lot of spicy. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I feel like such a wuss with that, especially living in Nashville. I feel like I should like hot spicy foods. Um, 
I like spicy in the tent in the sense of using a lot of seasonings, but I don't like hot spicy. So I'm not adding that in there. If you want to add some to uh, you know, if you want to spice up your soup, go ahead and at this moment add in a little bit of cayenne pepper. Remember, cayenne pepper goes a long way. You probably already know that if you're somebody that likes to cook with spice and heat and hot foods. <laughs> But I always start with a little bit at first and then at the end when everything is ready to be taste tested then that's when I add more ingredients in there. So that's literally all we do. We just add everything into the saucepan and we're gonna wait for this to come to a boil and then we're gonna cover it and we're gonna let it simmer until all the vegetables become very tender because then we're going to blend it. So you can use either your blender itself, you can start when this is soft and ready to be made into the actual soup, you can put it in your blender, put a towel on top because this liquid's gonna go everywhere. You do batches at a time. Or you can use an immersion blender, which um, I actually have and I'm gonna try to use that this time. So we're gonna wait for that to boil here and then we will, I guess I'll keep this nearby so I can. And then we will cover that and let it simmer for about 20 minutes. All right, so um, while that is cooking, we will make our second recipe. You guys are, <laughs> yay, we get two recipes tonight. It was decided on a whim, I would have told you guys. Um, we're gonna make our second recipe, which is the apple biscuits, and you literally need three ingredients, that's it. Um, I'm actually gonna use four, and I'll show you what I mean, but three ingredients, and it's ingredients you may already have in your uh, pantry, especially if you have a very well-stocked pantry. Um, and then of course we need our apple. Our apple, Our ingredient of the week. Our apple is um, super healthy for us. All right, like I said, I was doing a lot of research on it. If you guys ever get a chance or you're bored, seriously read up on the apple. You'll be blown away. It's really good for our heart, um, keeping blood pressure down, uh, lots of fiber, and you know it's a good thing to add, especially with breakfast. If you want to have it with oats, it just makes things a lot heartier. Adds all sorts of different flavors. There's so many different types of apples. It's unbelievable. And if you really think about all the different things that we can make with apples, it's crazy. <laughs> this is like a super fruit. It is just, I never really thought about apples the way that I had when I started doing research for, for our, cooking, our cooking class. Um, high in antioxidants and vitamin C, of course. You know, nature is providing us with the ingredients at the time that we need it. So a lot of us are, you know, it's October. It's October 1st today and um, already autumn. It's starting to get colder, it's darker sooner. Our bodies are preparing for a cold season, for the winter months coming up. And so a lot of the foods that are in season right now are the foods we should be eating because it's the natural nutrients that our bodies are craving from nature. So eat up on apples, boost your immune system, and it'll help help keep you full, keep you healthy, and help hopefully help boost your immune system and keep that uh, keep those colds away. And also at this time of the year, so it's autumn, it is a time that we're all really starting to settle in. Um, the animals seem really busy right now because they have this sense of urgency because you know, winter's coming, winter's coming, and um, they need to have food ready. You know, deer are eating lots of acorns, you know, to fatten up, because they're preparing to not find any food for the winter. And then other animals, like squirrels, are hiding their food. Um, you know, they seem a lot busier than at least how I feel. Winter, uh, autumn comes, and I just feel this internal desire to just hunker down to really ground down, to really, um, that's when I want soups, that's when I want pumpkins, that's when I want um, a lot of grounding foods. And by grounding, I mean a lot of the foods that um, 
grow underground or grow closer to the ground. They have that quality to them that just helps us, you know, helps us stay put. And I mean that in the sense of in the summertime, at least for me, a lot of people are like this. We're very, we're busy bodies. It's sunny out, it's longer days. Uh, we're going every which way. We're just, our anxiety is out just over the roof, over the moon. Um, and then of course we're drinking caffeinated beverages that just make it crazy. I feel like I'm just a, a balloon <laughs> that's trying to float away, trying to blow away and something's holding on to the very tip of the tip of the string. In the autumn, when I start eating more of these grounding ingredients, I feel it's almost like somebody is able to pull that balloon closer to the ground and, and hold me tight, hold the balloon sturdy so that we don't blow away. It, I probably sound like a crazy person talking like this, but I'm sure you guys kind of get what I'm trying to say. Um, if not, just get out of this whole conversation that right now <laughs> apples and squashes are in season and you should be eating those. So go stock up on those and have fun looking up recipes, making the soup, um, whatever you have to do to get those nutrients into our bodies, into your body that nature is trying to provide us. And maybe our bodies are probably subconsciously telling us that it needs these, these nutrients, but we're not hearing it. So I guarantee if you start eating more foods that are in season now and more of the grounding, you're going to notice a difference. I mean, obviously if you are consuming a ton of processed foods, you might not notice much of a difference, but we're trying to eat a whole food, um, more plant-based diet. Uh, I hate that word diet, uh, more of that lifestyle and, you know, eating as close to earth and as natural as we can, because nature has everything that we need for our bodies to heal and for us to be healthy. We just need to tune in, um, become more aware of what our bodies need and, you know, yoga helps with that. So, <laughs> but yeah, on the plus side, you probably learned some things about apples you didn't know, I hope. If not, feel free to do more research on it. I don't wanna go down that rabbit hole because we have a yummy soup that's cooking. But apples are very interesting and you can do so much with apples, it's crazy. So, back to our soup. It looks like we're starting to bubble a little bit. I'm gonna stir it up to get more of, and even though that oil is in there, or the vinegar is in there, it still smells so, so, so good. And I'm not gonna, you can taste test it now if you'd like. I probably wouldn't, because it's gonna taste mostly like vinegar. But if you wanted to add a little bit of salt and pepper in now, you could. I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna at least let add the pepper in there. I love pepper. <laughs> so I'm always finding a reason. But of course, there are people with pepper allergies, so if you are feeding this to somebody with that allergy, please don't add it in there. And then again, if you're not so sure if you'd like pepper in this soup, add a little bit now, and then try it again later. Before I forget, I did want to mention, this is not my recipe. This is from one of my Forks Over Knives cookbooks. Um... I came across it and I was like, wow, this sounds so good. I honestly have not even made it yet. I'll, I'll, I will be brutally honest about that. You'll find if you follow me on um, through Zen Chen Yoga's yoga videos and her cooking, I just, I want to be as raw and as authentic as possible. And this is real life, guys. I don't want, you know, to do the whole social media, Instagram life thing. I want you guys to feel like you are here with me experiencing this in the moment and we are cooking a new recipe together. So it sounded so good. Somebody had made me a butternut squash soup before and I just, I didn't think I'd like it and I fell in love with this. When I saw this recipe, I was like, yes, we have to try it. So I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on this to let it simmer for a little bit. And then we are going to make... 
our apple biscuits. So I will show you guys how to make that. Okay guys, so I just checked the soup and you can see it's bubbling very nicely. I wish you guys could smell it. It smells so good. It's starting to get really, really close to being done. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, my tummy is just growling right now. It's going crazy. Yes, it's really, really, really close. So I'm gonna show you real quick the ingredients that we need to make our, all right, I'm gonna let that just simmer just for a couple more, a couple more seconds, I guess you could say. So for the apple biscuits, it's, it's such an easy recipe. I came across it and I was like, this, there's no way that this could, something this easy to make cannot taste this great. To make anywhere from eight to 12 biscuits, you literally need two cups of flour. Um, I use all-purpose flour. I would recommend that for you as well. So two cups all-purpose flour, one teaspoon baking powder, and at least one apple. I'm using the red apple. I went ahead and cut them up already. I'm actually going, so that's all you need to make just the standard recipe. I'm actually gonna add some cinnamon to my um, flour this time. I tried it not too long ago <laughs> and they were so good. We added our apple butter that we got from Florida a while ago to it and it was just, oh my God, it was so good. And I all I could think about was, hmm, I need to add, a, I'm gonna add some cinnamon to it. So I'm probably gonna add some cinnamon to it this time as well. Um, the first thing we need to do, actually before, before I show you how to make these, I'm going to prepare this soup because I'm really concerned. I don't want to forget about it. I don't want it to get too, too mushy, I guess you could say. So what we're going to do here first, yeah, it feels, re it feels ready. Ready, ready. Okay, so let's finish our soup first and then I'll show you guys how to make the biscuits. I don't want this to get away from me. I don't wanna ruin my soup. And those of you who cook a lot know exactly what extra special little sense <laughs> there is. That, I don't know, it's just like this, you can be doing something. I, sometimes I'm in the other room and I'm like, oh shoot. You know, I can sense when my food is just like, don't forget this and it's done. Run out there and get it. Is it just me? Might just be me too. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and blend up this soup first and then I'll show you guys how to make these incredibly easy apple biscuits. Uh, again, you can transfer, first of all, turn off the heat. People always forget to turn the stove off when they get ready to do this part it will be beneficial, I promise. So make sure the heat's off, mine's not off yet. And you can transfer batches, small batches of this to your blender and, and blend it up. We're, we're pureeing it. We're gonna, this is how we're transferring it into um, a soup. So, and then use a towel on the top because liquids tend to just spray out everywhere. I learned that the hard way. That was a fun experience. So make sure you use a towel. Otherwise, if you have an immersion blender, whoops, like I do, it looks something like this, you can actually just stick this right in there and blend it up. So I will get that plugged in and um, get some things situated here and I can show you real quick how, how to do that, how that works. So let's go ahead and make our, let's blend our ingredients first and then we can make our biscuits, our incredibly easy delicious biscuits and then we will be ready to taste everything. <laughs> I'm getting like a leg exercise squatting down too. I just, I'm, I'm cool with that. I just want you guys to really see this. So I'm using my immersion blender. Um, this is the first time I've used it. I'm really excited. It's kind of the reason why I picked this recipe too so that I could use this. Now this thing's intense. I noticed it has six different um, speeds on it and I'm, I'm literally on the lowest speed and it even has a turbo button. 
I don't think I would use the turbo button on this because even when I just did it with the the very low setting, the soup was going everywhere. But I'm also, I always have the worst luck with stuff like this. So um, you are probably, could be a lot more graceful than me. So I just want to show you guys real quick how to use this thing. So obviously take your soup off the heat and then I make sure this is already in it. Don't turn it on and then put it in because it'll go everywhere. But you literally just hold your blender, like the on button, keep it on. And then right now I'm just kind of, whoops, chopping up the bigger pieces. And then once I get it chopped up, then I can kind of stir it up and make it more soupy. Now I would think, I like mine, I don't like my soup super, like at least soup like this, I don't like it with a lot of liquid in it. I like it a little bit, you know, chunky. But if you want it to be a little bit soupier, guys, this is like kind of mesmerizing, honestly. It's calming me down. Not that I was amped up before. I guess I was. I'm just now noticing that I was. <laughs> this is very satisfying to do. I'm going to be obsessed with this thing for a couple of weeks now. I'm not scared of it. Like I was with my food processor. My, um boyfriend got me a food processor and I was terrified of that thing. It took me months before I used it. I was so scared of it. Anything that can like chop your chop your finger off like that or anything that like the instructions tell you to unplug it before turning it on or turning it off. Yeah. But now I love it. It's my best thing. It's my favorite thing in the whole wide world. So okay. So this is looking pretty good. Another thing you could do, you could add a little bit more liquid in there, or if you want, which I'm probably gonna do, is just, I'm gonna leave it on a very, very, very low setting on the oven, I mean on the stove top, and let it cook a little bit like that. But maybe not though, this is looking pretty good. I'm really excited to try it. So again, you do this until your soup is ready, or put it in your blender. My hands start yellow apart. <laughs> I'm gonna play with this and see if there's any kind of pre-settings on this thing. But the soup smells amazing too. It smells so good. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to eat it. I'm so excited to try it. Okay. That thing is obnoxiously noisy. I'm going to unplug it. And I'm going to get this thing out of the way. Okay. That worked pretty well. I mean, there's still some chunky pieces in there, but it, it's like a potatoey soup to me. And I like it with a little bit of the pieces in there. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna taste test it yet. I want I wanna taste it when you guys see me taste it. So I can be really honest if it's good or not. <laughs> okay, let me get my lid. We're gonna let that stay warm. Um, I'm gonna just leave it on a very, very, very low setting. Super low, so it stays warm. Okay, back to our apple biscuit. All right, so we need two cups of flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, and one red apple. I actually did two. Last time I did one and I almost didn't have enough for my uh, batter. You're gonna want the batter super wet. Um, 
So you can do two, and then whatever's left over, you can just eat it, because we're literally just making applesauce. So I'm gonna put this in my mini food processor. If you guys don't have a mini food processor, you really should consider getting one, because it has been my best friend in the kitchen. And like even when you wanna chop up onions, or and or garlic this this guy will take care of it for you I think I found him for like 40 bucks I like Target or something so okay I need to blend this down a little bit before I can add the rest of my apple I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of water and then you literally let me see if I can get it a little bit closer can kind of see it a little bit. I don't want to get too close to the hot top, hot stove top down there. Okay, you literally just stick it in there and then I press puree. And you just keep doing it. until you make like an applesauce or your neighbors or your animals start yelling at you because they hate the noise. My animals hate the noise. <laughs> They're all giving me the stink eye. So I'm gonna do it a little bit more. It literally makes like an applesauce consistency. Um, also, I didn't even peel these because last time, I'm gonna add some more in here. It tasted, it was actually really tasty having, leaving the skin on it. And also, again, the skin has, I'm gonna add a little bit more water in there. Let's get this guy out of the way. Um, again, the skin has all of our nutrients in it and we're trying to stay healthy and help our boost our immune system a little bit. Okay, let me blend this. I'm gonna make some more noise. <laughs> And then literally you just twist it and pop it off and voila. Let me get the blades out. Look, it's like homemade applesauce. It's not that pretty, but it tastes amazing. And it smells like the apple orchard. I'm, I, yes, this is amazing. Okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way. And then you guys, I was sitting here like talking so highly about cinnamon and I just realized I totally forgot it. So I'm gonna, pop in my cabinet and grab it real quick. You know, I always forget something. I always forget something. And I'm really, really hoping I have it right here in the front. Actually, I know exactly where it's at. There it is. I have tried so many times to organize my cabinet, my spices, and it just, it just, yeah. I have so many spices I can't even. Okay. I went ahead and I put the flour and the um, baking powder in the bowl. So two cups, uh, again, two cups of flour, one teaspoon of the baking powder. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add the cinnamon. The cinnamon is not part of the recipe. This is me experimenting. I just think, ugh, you'll see. Just please, if you're not gonna make the soup, make these biscuits. The kids will really like them too. And it's a really easy way to sneak in some nutrition. Cause you know, kids are always suspicious about what you feed them. No, I don't have any kids, but I have younger siblings. I am the eldest of, <laughs> what, five kids? <laughs> Yes, the eldest of five. Oh my gosh. So I actually experiment a lot with cooking on them. At least two of them. We were home a lot. Um, cooking and, you know, sorry mom, sometimes mom made some stuff that we didn't want to eat and 
my siblings would kind of come to me like, hey, can you like make this and this instead? Like, it's crazy, but I love cooking. And so it was just, that's where it, that's where it got sparked, the interest in cooking. Okay, let's move this out of the way. And then we're literally gonna start. Forgot my spoon. I'm just gonna start adding our applesauce. I've got a one fourth cup. I'm just gonna start adding it um, a little at a time. Cause you may or may not even need that much. Now when you mix, you don't wanna over mix. So I literally just gently fold everything over. So that it's just mixed. Cause if you over mix it, your biscuits come out hard. And that's the same with like, especially if you're doing plant-based baking, I noticed like cupcakes and things like that. If you over mix it, it, they come out hard. So you can see it's still dry. So we can add some more apples in there. I swear it takes way less time than it has been to make these. Ugh, this stuff smells so good. Okay, we're starting to get a little bit of a batter here. And your dough is gonna look a little brown, and that's okay. That's just going to the apples. You could use, if you don't wanna use, um, maybe you wanna make these even quicker, you could just get applesauce from the store. In fact, get cinnamon applesauce. I bet it'd be really good. I don't know. I haven't tried it with cinnamon yet. But I'm going to, because this is what I got in here. Okay, we're just about there. Honestly, I feel like I'm gonna need like the rest of this. So I'm going for it. I think two cups is just the right amount. Yeah, because now it's starting to get more like the biscuit dough that we want. Again, don't over stir. Just keep folding it over until, and honestly, I just like to stick my hands in here to mix it up more too, but I won't do it since I'm, <laughs> since I have guests in my kitchen tonight, I'm not going to be animalistic about my cooking but you know we were born with tools that are our fingers and our hands and why not use them okay oh, whoa that was close sorry i'm smelling so many good things <laughs> oh my gosh i'm smelling so many good things right now and i can't figure out if it's that or it's this and i really think it's it's definitely that. That stuff smells so good. Okay, so here's the, this is what your dough is gonna look like. It's it's wet, but it's still sticky. And a lot of you who make biscuits at home know that that's what you want. Grab a baking sheet, put a sheet of parchment paper down, and then you want to just drop spoonfuls. So I usually start with a little bit And these are like drop biscuits. I don't know if you guys grew up having them called that. I don't know. I don't know. I call them drop biscuits. It's what I learned as a kid. But you literally just drop them on your parchment paper. They're not gonna be a pretty shape. They don't have to be a pretty shape. It'd be really hard to make these in a pretty shape, but you drop them on here. You can do anywhere between uh, eight and 12. You can do big ones, smaller ones, whatever strikes your fancy. And then you want to um, 
pop it in the oven, uh, 400 degrees for about, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe five to 10, maybe 12 minutes. Again, it just really depends on the size of your biscuit and um, your oven, where you're even cooking at. Um, but just keep an eye on it. I, I would start with maybe seven minutes, put it at seven and then check on it. And you want your biscuits to be uh, firm, a little bit, maybe a little bit browning on the edges, brown on the bottom. So, and when you take them out, they'll cook for a little bit longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish dropping all the biscuits on here. And then I'm gonna pop it in the oven and we will let that cook for um, anywhere between five and 12 minutes. I don't know, we'll find out. So I will be back with our delicious biscuits ready to go. Okay guys, here are my messy biscuits. I ended up making what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, they're gonna be big biscuits. My stomach just kind of took over <laughs> cooking. I'm so hungry. So I got big, big biscuits going in the oven. Here we go. Turn my oven light on. And we will set timer. Mm, they're kind of bigger, so I'll probably go closer. I'm just going to start at 10 and I'm keeping an eye on it. So, 10 minutes, our biscuits should be ready. Okay, guys, so the biscuits are almost done. I went ahead and dished up <laughs> some of the soup. And we're going to taste test it and see. It's still pretty warm. It's really good. It's very tart. I had a really good apple I put in there. You can definitely taste the vinegar. Um, the acorn squash, you can't really taste it, but it adds that potato-y consistency I was talking about. I probably would have pureed it a little bit, little bit more, but it's still really, really good. Um, I mean, it tastes pretty spicy to me. I can feel it on my tongue, but that's probably because of all the pepper added. But if you want, I could see how somebody would want to add some of that cayenne, cayenne pepper there. I'm not going to add it to mine. <laughs> and I think these apple biscuits are going to complement the soup really well. I probably don't need the apple butter, nor want the apple butter. Actually, I might want the apple butter later, but I will try the biscuit plain and um, putting in my soup. This is really good. I would totally serve this maybe as like an appetizer or something at um, Thanksgiving, uh, even like a side dish. Um, maybe have a big salad with it and um, some bread and soup. That would make a really, really good hearty dinner. And that would be a really inexpensive meal too. So I'm going to set that aside for now and then let's get our biscuits out. I'm pretty sure they're done because they smell like they're ready. And they smell so good. <laughs> they're like mutant, mutant biscuits. Okay, they're really hot. But obviously, this one's a nice brown bottom. Everybody has a different, um, I guess, type of biscuit that they like. So however you like your biscuits, make them that way. It takes no time at all to cook them. Um, they smell amazing. I'm really excited to eat this with my soup. I'm probably gonna go watch a scary movie with Sadie, <laughs> with my soup and my apple biscuits. And yeah, yeah. I'm just so distracted because it smells so good here. So again, it takes, it really doesn't take that long to, to make this. It just seems like it takes long because I'm kind of walking you through it and talking through it. Um, but you could have a lot of this stuff prepped very, very quickly. You could have your saucepan already heating up, throw in your onions while your onions are browning. You can cut up your squash and your apple and then toss those in. And then it's like adding 
the broth and the other spices and it boils, you know, it's already warm so it's going to boil very quickly and then you simmer it, while it's simmer it, you could throw together your biscuits, um, your salad or whatever and by the time everything that's done, your soup will probably be close to being done. So you can throw your biscuits in the oven while that's cooking then you can blend your soup or, you know, what you got to do and it's all about time management and you could really get this done in probably 20 minutes. So very quick. Um, that's it. Yeah. We just made a curried squash and pump or apple soup. Obviously I'm still thinking about pumpkins and, um, the apple biscuits that require three ingredients and maybe like 10 minutes to cook and full of flavor, very nutritious. It's, it's also a very light meal. So it's nice to eat that in the evening. Um, before going to bed. I think you guys are really gonna like it. If you make this or you experiment with it, please let me know. You can send me an email um, at the the Zinchin, <coughs> excuse me, the Zinchin0501 at gmail. That's on the website, zinchinyoga.com. You can send me an email. Um, you can leave a message here underneath the video on YouTube. You can do that. Let me know what you did. You can, if you're on Instagram, you can tag me, uh, hashtag Zen Chin Yoga, um, so I can see the pictures. Let me know how it goes. And if you guys have kids, let me know if your kids liked it. If you have a husband or a boyfriend that's super picky, um, let me know if they tried it and they liked it. So this is just the beginning. We have a lot more recipes to experiment with, and I'm not going to divulge next week's special ingredient. You will have to wait and find out through the newsletter. If you don't have the newsletter coming to your inbox and you want to be one of the first people to receive the new videos, go to zenchinyoga.com and sign up for the newsletter there. I promise you only get one, one, one newsletter once a week unless I have some very exciting news I need to share with you. Um, you'll get it once a week and they're fun. They're not gonna be wordy or super long or anything like that. It's just a little check-in and you guys can be the first to receive all the new videos and any other new important, exciting announcements from Zen Chin Yoga. Um, yeah, I'm ready to eat this, you guys. It smells so good. Um, like and subscribe. So like this video, subscribe to this channel. That's another way you can stay on top of hearing the videos too. Share this, share this around for people who are curious about plant-based cooking. Um, no, we don't just eat salads <laughs> and yes, we get plenty of protein. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay guys. Well, thank you so, so much for joining me tonight in making our weekly plant-based meal. Um, again, if you have any questions, let me know. If you make this, let me know. If you do any other variation, added anything, change anything, let me know. Just stay in the loop and, um, I will see you guys all very, very soon. Thank you, have a good night.